Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So let us uh, continue the discussion on ramjet. So we are in the middle of the discussion of the ramjet cycle analysis and we have looked at both the um, ideal cycle and the uh, actual cycle. So there are a couple of more things that uh, I would like to discuss and then we will look at the scramjet analysis. So one of the thing that uh, becomes is that also there is an application which is uh, called nuclear ramjet okay so this is uh, like uh, the principle behind this nuclear ramjet is bit relatively simple so there are the three basic components are uh, the same but the nuclear ramjet is used to heat the air of <coughs> burning fuel in a combustion chamber so, the some additional components are used compared to ramjet okay. and also like some ramjet components, ramjet components plus some additional component like reactor core plus uh, radiation shield and heat exchanger. So, these are the some of the other extra component which are kind of used ok and so one can have a like an schematic like how it can look like that you have a sort of an uh, a moderator here and then uh, the moderator from here it uh, sort of uh, goes uh, back and then like you have this nuclear sort of reactor this is the nuclear reactor and then it um, goes to uh, like from here the things start and you have some piping here and this will be sort of enclosed and this is where your this is what you have the air inlet this is where the nuclear heat goes in and this portion is essentially your uh, ramjet portion and this is your exhaust or exhaust. So, this connection kind of connected with the pump and comes back. So, th this is just an schematic how it looks like, but we will not go very much uh, details of that. What we will be more interested to another important one which is called the uh, double throat ramjet engine. So, double throat ramjet engine uh, we will look at the schematic. So, this is double throat ramjet. Now, just and it will look like this. So, this will go then uh, maybe this will go up then second throat and then goes like this and if we just uh, have an basement here then this is the spike the so that takes into account and then kind of exiting out. So, 
you can have sort of uh, different so like cross shock interaction then so from this portion up to this this is intake and then uh, this is the portion which is combustion chamber so we can have the burners here let us say 1, 2, 3 and then this portion is nozzle, so that is 4. So, it has two throats, the first one is to decelerate the flow to subsonic before combustion chamber and second one is to accelerate the flow to again supersonic. So, this guy supposed to decelerate before it comes to the combustion chamber and this throat is supposed to accelerate so that you get. So, DTR this double throat ramjet it has a supersonic subsonic intake followed by a subsonic combustion chamber then a subsonic supersonic nozzle. So, the flow is decelerated supersonic flow so, it enters combustion chamber then again it uh, actually the exhaust it actually again increases to a supersonic flow and the typical TS diagram that one can have is that you go to 1 then 1 to 3, 3 to 4. So, this is 1, this is 0, 2, then 0, 3, So, that is T naught 3, this is T naught 2, then T 4, T 1. So, that is how the, the diagram would look like. Now, that is a double throat ramjet. Now, then we will move to the scramjet. So, it is a called the supersonic combustion ramjet, that is what the name stands for. So, so, experimental scamjet powered is that Boeing X 51A. The test craft was lifted to flight altitude by a Boeing PB 52 Stratofortress before being released and accelerated by a detachable rocket to near Mach 5.1. So, this was tested in 2013. So, it also has three basic components like intake combustor chamber nozzle, while this is also conceptually very simple, but actual implementation is very limited and because of the technological challenges. Now, only limited testing can be performed in ground facilities, long duration full scale testing requires flight test speed above max 6. Now, also the hypersonic flight within the atmosphere generates immense drag temperatures found on the aircraft within that engine and then also maintaining combustion in supersonic as the fuel must be injected, mixed and ignited, so that is a challenge. 
so within few milliseconds. So, these are the some of the challenges that there are two families of operational application can be seen for this high speed propulsion. One is uh, let us say combined air breathing or rocket propulsion for space launcher and second one could be the military system mainly missiles mainly missiles and drone like that and the evaluation so first in 1940 in uh, the r&d started in usa and canada so then later on there are different uh, development which took place and and the latest one is that now there are different countries which are involved at present now like pro, uh, hypersonic programming germany india brazil they are also uh, all are in this um, these things so advantage and disadvantage of this candidate. So, if we put some advantage and at the same time some disadvantage like one of the biggest thing that it does not need to carry oxygen. Second, no rotating parts which makes it easier to manufacture a high specific impulse. So, that is another beauty of that. Fourth, higher speed could mean cheaper access to outer space in future. Then disadvantages, it cannot produce efficient thrust unless boosted to high speed, let us say around Mach 5. For a horizontal takeoff scramjet would need neither a rocket or a combined propulsion system like turbojet or turbofan to boost it to some Mach 2 to 3 followed by another propulsion method like ramjet or rockets. So, that is a problem. Then uh, testing is expensive. So, any prototype uh, design also are extremely expensive hypersonic test chamber or ex uh, launch vehicle because not only high instrumentation cost also other factors which are involved. Uh, lack of stealth as the vehicle would be vehicle would be very hot due to high speed within the atmosphere and it would be easy to be detected with infrared sensor. The increased cooling requirement, so increased cooling requirement of scramjet engines result in lower efficiency. So, these are some of these things. So, now we can draw a schematic of the engine. 
let us say uh, like this. and we could so this portion is the sort of intake then this is combustion chamber and this is nozzle so, 1, 2, 3, 4, here you will have all this, this shock, like this and if I put the T S diagram, so this 1 to 2, So, that is four, one, two, okay. T four, T one, T two, T three. So this is combustion chamber. This is intake. This is uh, nozzle. Okay let us say this point is somewhere y, this point is x. So, station 1, it is the represent the intake, inlet of the intake which is also beginning of the compression process. Since the hypersonic shock wave angles are small, the ramp or spikes are long and so, then station 2, it starts the combustion entrance of the combustion chamber and it is in a fixed geometry scramjet, the pressure at the combustion chamber varies. 3, it is the exit of the combustion chamber and entry to the nozzle and the station 4, it exit of the nozzle. Now, we look at the intake first and uh, intake module. So, what will happen because of the shock there are losses. So, intake isentropic efficiency would be T x minus T 1 by T 2 minus T 1. So, the area ratio would be m 1 by m 2 1 plus 0.5 into gamma c minus 1 m 1 square 0.5 into gamma c minus 1 m 2 square by gamma c plus 1 by 2 gamma c minus 1. Similarly, we will get T 2 1 plus 0.5 into gamma c minus 1 m 1 square 1 plus 0.5 into gamma c minus 1 m 2 square and P 2 by so P 2 by P 1 or P 2 equals to P 1 1 plus eta i T 2 by T 1 minus 1 gamma c by gamma c minus 1. So, the inlet total pressure recovery is, um, is modeled with m i l. So, it is modeled with m i l spec E 5007 D which can provide some correlations. These correlations are like P naught 2 by P naught 1 is 1 for M 1 less than 1 and 0, P naught 2 by P naught 1 is 1 minus 0 0.0776 M 1 minus 1 and this is the range where 1 to 5 
and P naught 2 by P naught 1 it would be 800 by m1 to the power 4 935 which is m1 greater than 5. So, then we go to the burner and once we go to the burner then we again do the analysis. So, what we get? T naught 3 equals to m dot eta b q h b by c p h m dot a plus f m dot a c p c t 2 by c p h m dot a plus m dot f 1 plus 0.5 into gamma c minus 1 m 2 square. So, T naught 3 by T naught 2 would be m 3 square by m 2 square 1 plus gamma c m 2 square m 3 square 1 plus 0.5 into gamma h minus 1 m 3 square by 0.5 into gamma c minus 1 and P 3 equals to P 2 1 plus gamma c plus 1 gamma c m 3 square and T 3 equals to T naught 3 by and uh, similarly nozzle we will get the nozzle. So, eta n is T 3 minus T 4 by T 3 minus T y. So, T 4 is T 3 minus T 3 eta n 1 minus P 2 by P 3 gamma h minus 1 by gamma h and V 4 is 2 C P h T naught 3 minus T 4. So, if we put the block diagram it looks like we have a block diagram here this is intake. So, you have m 1 t 1 p 1 this is where m 2 then combustion chamber this is a 2 by a 1 from here it goes t 2 p 2 m dot a m dot f then we get to nozzle where m 3 p 3 t 3 and then finally, t 4 v 4 and this goes here. So, now we just uh, look at the performance analysis and when you do that so, the thrust would be m dot a plus m dot f v 4 minus m dot a v 1. So, T by m dot a would be 1 plus f v 4 minus v 1. So, T s f c would be m dot f by T, T by m dot a and then propulsive efficiency which is T into V 1 by delta kinetic energy. So, that means it could be written as to V 1 m dot a plus m dot f V 4 minus m dot a V 1 then m dot a 1 plus f V 4 minus V 1 square. So, this is what we can write is 2 v 1 into v 4 1 plus a minus 2 v 1 square divided by 1 plus a v 4 square minus v 1 square. 
So, if f is small, then eta p r this uh, propulsive efficiency is 2 v 1 by v 1 plus v 4. And similarly, we can find out thermal efficiency, it is delta kinetic energy by q added. So, this would be m dot a 1 plus f v 4 square minus by 2 m dot f eta combustion chamber q h v. So, which is written as minus v 1 square divided by 2 f q h v eta c c. So, again f small this will boils down to like v 4 square minus v 1 square by 2 f eta c c q h v and overall efficiency which would be eta p r into eta thermal efficiency and I s p would be T by m dot g. So, these are all the performance parameter that one can calculate and uh, look at. So, so, there could be another one which could be looked at is that So, which is called dual ramjet. So, this is dual ramjet is also a dual mode scramjet. So, where the ramjet at low speed, where ramjet at low speed and transform to scramjet at high speeds. Okay. So, that is why it is called dual mode. So, now I mean basically this is another advancement where one can also look at the these things and can do the thermodynamical analysis that uh, so this will also have a similar component like uh, intake or inlet then uh, I mean it will have let us say component like intake then there would be isolator then there is combustion chamber then there would be nozzle. So, these are the some of the component is just like if somebody uh, draw a schematic like that and if that is the spike. So, these are the pattern of the shock. So, now this portion is essentially this is the intake, then uh, there would be this portion which is called the isolator then this portion which is combustion chamber and this is nozzle. And also I mean if you draw the T s diagram then you can always do the this aero thermodynamic analysis. So, that is can be also done. So, Essentially, these are also some of the advancement in the scramjet application that uh, where people can use all this, uh, but eventually it is important to note that the scramjet things are still at the experimental mode. I mean none of the flight, I mean only the flight which was given some test by US, but others all other countries they are in this. Mm, scramjet hypersonic program, they have different different program in hypersonic zone where they are about to build some prototype uh, and then basically demonstrate the technology. So, mostly I would say these are all uh, at the level of technology, technology logy demonstration. So, 
that is what different countries what uh, they have this program, uh, these different vehicles they are into or the kind of things they are uh, trying to develop, these are called technology demonstrator vehicle, hypersonic technology demonstrator vehicle. And they have pretty much the, I mean outer configuration or the from apparently they look probably similar but uh, because they built on the same principle, similar kind of uh, things, but this is really a challenge. So, we will uh, uh, close the discussion on scamjet here or rather uh, stop the discussion on scamjet here uh, and we will move to the next set of uh, engine for uh, discussion in the next class. Thank you.